What is up homies, my name is Felix and I am here back again with another LMMS tutorial and today we're going to be talking a little bit about automations. I know some of you have been asking me about how to automate certain plugins and stuff and I think this would be just a pretty helpful video overall for everybody but before we get into it you guys should follow my Instagram and my SoundCloud which will both be down in the description below along with the playlist of songs I've produced and my beat store and my discord and all that stuff as well and also just a little bit of an announcement I'm working on a sample pack right now so for all of you guys who find making melodies and making samples to be difficult i'll be coming out with a pretty cheap sample pack pretty soon so yeah i'll keep you guys updated with that and now let's get into this video so basically i have this little beat here that i made it's super simple nothing crazy And the first thing that I'm going to do is show you guys how to add your own plugins that you've downloaded. So the way you do that is you go to edit and then settings. And then you go to this file thing, which is the directories. And then you go to VST plugin directory. Click this. And then you find wherever you keep all of your plugins and everything. So this is where I keep all mine. They're all in this thing. And then you do select folder. And then once you do select folder, the plugins that you'll see will show up from inside of this plugins thing. And also you'll have the stock plugins as well. And then once you hit OK, it'll say, please note that the changes won't take effect until you restart LMMS. So yeah, just keep that in mind that you'll have to restart LMMS before anything changes. So basically to make an automation track, you click here and then you drag this out. And what we're going to do is put a little filter on the master track. So basically, I'm going to go in here to the master. I'm going to go to add effect. And then I'm going to go to EQ. And then click the equalizer. And then adjust this here. And now what we're going to do, since we have this how we like it, we're going to see what knob is changing when we move this. And as you can see down here, it's this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down control and then left click and then drag this into here. And now what we can do is go into the automation and control this parameter here. And this is going to work the same way for literally anything with any plugin, with any knob inside of here. I could literally do it with the master track. I could do it with any one of these. I could do it with the tempo. You could do it with anything. You just have to hold down control, click, and then drag it into the automation track. So now if we go into the automation, I can go into here. And basically the numbers at the top are pretty standard they're just the bars that we have so let's say we want this effect to go up which basically in this instance would mean that we're getting rid of the effect so i'm going to click on this here and then i'm going to left click and put in a dot and now i'm going to put in another one here to adjust the middle and now if we go back into here and play it it's going to fade out this effect As you can hear the effect fades out and that's pretty dope so now what i'm going to do is add another automation track and because some people are asking me how you do the tape stop effect i'm going to show you guys that right now so you can go in here to the master as well and then go to so right here's the tape stop and what we're going to do is as you can see this looks kind of weird you're going to click on this little wrench thing and it's going to show up this and now we can adjust this this is the slowdown so this is basically how fast or slow the actual slowdown is going to be. What we need to do is adjust the trigger. So the trigger, we're going to do control, click, and first we need to add one of these. Control, click, and drag this in. And now we can drag it out. So as you can see right now, the trigger is not activated because it's all the way down. But what we have to do is go into the automation, and now we're going to activate it whenever we want it to activate. So basically, the way that the tape stop works as well is that it has to get to the middle here before the effect actually plays so i'm just do it like this and then you'll hear once it gets to there that it slows down and what we want to do is bring the beat back in right before this bar drops in so essentially we're going to turn off the automation right before this bar and the, basically the way that you have to do that is kind of complicated so if i place another dot in here and i go to drag it all the way underneath it doesn't work it just goes back down and this it gets rid of this one so what we have to do is we have to zoom in quite a bit and I'm gonna make this full screen and I'm going to change this to the smallest interval that we can possibly get and you might have trouble with trying to click this again and then accidentally creating a new one so what we can do is just create a whole new one entirely and then we're just gonna drag this down to as close as we can get it before it's actually underneath that first dot at the top so right about here looks like the closest we're going to get it so now if we go into here and play it it's going to cut off the effect right as the fifth bar plays as you can hear 
but there's a little bit of a cut off. It cuts out like the slightest bit of the beginning right there. As you can hear, the 808 just doesn't hit as hard. So what we can actually do is if we want to zoom in even further, we can scooch everything back. So if we want to scooch this back, like just ever so slightly, and then move this back as well so that it's right on the line here. And now this isn't gonna cut off the 808. So as you can hear, it sounds good, it sounds nice. It doesn't cut off that 808 anymore and it sounds pretty clean. For the most part, you know, there might be a little bit of tweaking that you have to do, but for the most part, it's gonna sound good and you just have to adjust it as you see fit. And yeah, this is kind of one thing that sucks about LMS where you have to do a whole lot of extra steps just to do one thing. Whereas in FL Studio, this would be super easy to do because you can place one dot below another dot. So yeah, that's just like a little bit of a nuisance that you have to deal with in LMS. But yeah, now one last thing I want to show you guys is how to fade out the volume at the end. So basically what you can do is you can go up here. This is the master volume. You can hit control and then drag it in again. So what you want to do with this is see where you want it to fade out. So I want to fade it out for these last like four bars here. So I'm going to go in and open automation editor. And now we're going to go to where we have our automation. And this is where it ends, I'm pretty sure. So we're going to switch this back to a normal, you know, ratio. And now I'm going to drag this down and we're going to change this to this one too, because I like this one better. And I think this is where the start of it was. So I want to drag it back up to 100. So place a dot here. So I actually made a small mistake here. So what you want to do when you're doing the master fade out is you want to click this one instead of this one, because as you can see, it creates a little bump here and that's going to mess with your volume throughout the middle of the track. So you want it to be on this linear one instead of this, whatever this one's called. And this way it's going to go all the way through and then fade out to the end. So now it's going to be like this. So yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know for automations inside of LMMS. It's not too hard of a concept, but I just know that a lot of people don't mess with it. When I was mainly using LMMS, I really never messed with automations a whole lot because I don't know, it just seemed like complicated and it seemed like, you know, too much work, but honestly, it's not too bad. And you can do the same procedure with literally anything. Like let's say if we go into the beat and baseline editor and I want to put an effect on the strings here, I can go to add effect. Let's say it's like a reverb or something. And let's say I have this reverb on here and I want to change any one of these parameters literally just control click drag it in and then it will make that an automation track so yeah you can do that with plugins that are on individual instruments as i said you can do it with the master track knob the tempo the volume the pitch literally anything that you want and we could also do it with individual effects tracks as well. Anything your heart desires, you just gotta play around with it and see what sounds good. Kind of the last thing that I wanna show you guys is that there is an automation inside of the piano roll as well. So I know some of you have been asking me about 808 slides and I actually showed a little bit how to do 808 slides in my UK drill beat video, but I'll just break it down for you guys right here as well. If you click on a note, so first you have to select this, the pitch bend mode, and then click on a note. So now it's gonna take you to here, which looks exactly like the global automation screen as well. And what you can do is click to add a point. And as you can see, it says 12. That's basically gonna be 12 semitones, which is an octave. So that means this is gonna slide up an octave. As you can hear there, it slides up an octave. But let's say I want it to slide up to C. That's one, two, three, four, five notes away. So I click back in here and then I drag this down to five and it's gonna slide up to C. As you can see right there. So if you want it to be a quicker slide, what you can do is you can adjust this and bring it in there and I could, I'll just do 12 for now. And as you can see, this is a much steeper line and it's gonna slide way faster. And the same goes if you want it to slide way slower, you can drag it out further and it's gonna slide way slower. So yeah, also keep in mind that it depends on the length of your sample. So basically that means you're not gonna be able to slide 808s really well if they're really short 808s, if the 808 sample is really short because there's just not enough room for it to slide. Like let's say I wanted to slide this way over here. This 808 sample is too short to really get that slide in. So it's gonna sound basically the same as the original sample. So what you need to do is slide it usually pretty short 
and that way it's going to do what you actually want it to do um also i guess you could do automations inside of here as well but for the most part you're just going to use automations on the actual song editor because that's you know more convenient and it's more kind of streamlined so yeah i think that's pretty much it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and i'll be sure to answer them if i left anything out let me know and yeah make sure to check out my instagram and my soundcloud down in the description below and i will see you guys next time Baby, come follow me.